वेलकम सर वेलकम नमस्कार नमस्कार सर आपको थोड़ा हमारी वजह से तकलीफ हुई सर Sir, Dr. Ashok Kumar, sir, is a graduate and PhD from Madura Madura Veterinary College. Uh, presently, sir is working as a principal scientist of veterinary medicine uh, in ICR Central Institute for Research, that is CIRG, uh, at Makadu. And uh, sir has a vast experience of thirty years uh, in teaching as well as research in the field of veterinary medicine. and most particularly animal disease management and its prevention and control uh, sir has more than 125 articles uh, sir has published more than 125 articles in the journals of national and international repute also sir has a very good book on his credit uh, which has been published by tabi and book is entitled as uh, goat production and supply chain management in tropics uh, Uh, dear friends, uh, I am also feel proud, feel privileged to tell you about. Sir has uh, uh, published, uh, he has published or granted three patents in drug research, particularly, and uh, also commercialized seven product formulations. Uh, and also, yeah, as far as the teaching and uh, postgraduate uh, research is concerned, sir has uh, supervised more than twenty-five uh, postgraduate students. And twelve PhD students. Uh, as far as the other academic and research activities are concerned, sir uh, also has worked as a visiting scientist to uh, United States Department of Agriculture, Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania, USA. Also, sir is a fellow of two uh, prestigious professional societies. So this is a brief introduction about sir, and uh, sir is much more than this. and uh, we thank that uh, sir has accepted our invitation and he uh, is always there as a con constant uh, so constant uh, spirit with us and uh, sir today will be talking on a very uh, fine topic uh, because our uh, economics of goat production revolves around uh, kids particularly and uh, kid mortality is a major issue uh, in goat production due to which uh, our many of entrepreneurs farmers so they used to get lost in the uh, goat production business and uh, the business has not been uh, developed to the extent what it can and that is uh, one of the major reasons is that kid mortality so i will not take much time and i am also eager with all participants to uh, Know from the sir about major reasons of kid mortality and its control. Sir, it is over to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Giris, uh, for the introduction. And now I am uh, sharing my presentation. i think presentation is visible uh, no sir uh, it will be it will come yes it is visible now sir please make it in full screen mode now can it is clear uh, yes sir now it is clear okay, okay. thank you very much uh, so uh, first of all i would like to express my sincere thanks to organizer especially dr giris for again giving me opportunity to have interaction with the professionals and especially the scientists and academicians and farmers and they are working in the goat production we are working in the goat production since last 20 years so we had an experience and we have some research being carried out by cirg on the kid mortality so some of the experiences and major research that we also been experienced in this in this lecture 
so as you know the goat production is now gaining a momentum in our country although this goat production is majorly in the hands of the small farmers but the last few years we are experiencing that the some of the uh, young graduates and the professionals they are coming up for rearing the goat in the more organized manner the goat is the second largest livestock species after the cattle and the population of the goat is increasing by 10% in comparison to the last livestock census and the goat having the highest milk production and the country and in the in the world and second in the goat population in the goat meat production and also contribute significantly by 9.2% to the total value of the output that is because of a uh, livestock sector and the this goat sector is contributes to the 3% in the milk and the 1.08 million tons of goat meat that is 13.4% so there is a significant contribution of the goat in the and the national contribution of the economy and there is a huge domestic market for the fresh meat and because you know the fresh meat is most liked by the all the person there is no social taboo attached with this goat meat so it is the highest selling the fresh meat in the country and the rate of the goat meat is now getting more costlier at some places you will see the 450 500 rupees per kg even uh, the higher rates and we are the largest exporter of the sheep and goat milk to the middle east and we uh, the you know the goat productions are majorly uh, being reared by the small farmers still by 80 to 80% to uh, the most of it is being reared by small farmers but as the awareness is increasing especially to the goat milk as a medicinal value the number of the farmers are increased the number of the farmers are try to getting the information from the different social media platform and uh, so the goat husbandry is now coming as a industry in this country uh, uh, we also experience that the number of the social media platform is uh, you can see in the whatsapp you will find they are discussing the newer sciences and the and the uh, they are very interested to know the modern science in the goat production and how to go for a scientific goat rearing but out of all we will see that uh, from the very past of the extensive rearing of system now we are going to the more advanced rearing system or more intensive system of the rearing system especially the urban goat farm see the goat mortality is always a really a concern to the farmers because goat kid mortality especially is a um, very important because it having a direct loss it disturb the enthusiasm of the farmers and it disturb the future of the goat farmers and that's why the and the kid mortality always in all livestock species is really a cause of concern so if you see the major challenges in the goat productions we have identified the four major challenges in the goat production one is genetic improvement and conservation of the indigenous goat breeds we have at present 34 goat breeds characterized by the different institutions by icr with the help of the university but still there are 40 to 45 goat breeds which is yet to be characterized so uh, the characterized breed is also threatened in a situation some, somewhere if some of the breeds are decreasing in the number so the conservation is also one of the important issues although the icr is running a all india coordinated research project on goat improvement on the 21 center in the country where we are providing the technical support to the farmers especially the local genotype the higher mortality due to diseases we always say uh, I have to say the problem to the farmers, and especially to the goat, because the major goat population is being reared by the small farmers, and they are not providing the uh, the I would say the the more inputs in terms of the prevention, vaccination, the warming. So the mortality is some places is very high. Although now the science is infusing to the youngsters, and they are using the more advanced uh, technology. The shortage of the elite breeding males. always a problem because the good class of the male is being sold by the farmers as because they are catching the good price at these important the months of the uh, the sale of the animals so there is a shortage of lit, uh, breeding uh, males the deficiency of the feed and fodder because of the rapid degradation of the natural resources and shrinkage of the grazing lands and this is applicable to all livestock species inadequate extension services means the uh, farmers always need of the new informations 
So we should have, although we have a very good network in our country to provide the awareness and, and information to the farmers, but although it is uh, not a very in a proper manner. So uh, there is a topic that livestock production versus climate changes. So this is a really uh, important issue that climate change is also impacting the uh, goat, uh, impacting the livestock production. And, uh, similarly, the, the goat and uh, I would say the small ruminant species, the water is major being affected. It's either it is reduced in quantity, means there is change in quantity and quality of the water because of the, the variation in the precipitations. So it is experienced that drier air becoming drier and wetter become more wetter. So there is a disturbance in the water availability to the animals. The feed resources is also being disturbed because of the, the climate changes. The quality and quantity both are is being affected. So the quality and quality is being affected is directly impacting the both the animal productions. The incidence of the diseases, surely the uh, livestock uh, uh, is being affected by the various severity of the important infectious diseases and the impact of the heat stress and other factors is also putting their impact on the livestock production is also deteriorating immunity of the animals and animals become more susceptible. Why I'm uh, saying this uh, livestock production affecting by the climate because the goat is considered as the most adaptive to the environment. As you know, at present we have a 34 characterized breeds and they are being distributed in the all agroclimatic conditions from dry to the Himalayan and cold regions. So this is the most adaptive breeds and most flourishing breeds in the adverse climatic conditions. So that's why this goat has been taken as a future animals because of it is able survivability in the varied climates and even in the very sparse availability of the feeding fodders. Now we're coming to the actual topic. Neurotin mortality means from zero to three months, we will see what are the important diseases that are being experienced by the farmers at their farm and how you can best just, you can identify what is the problem in kit mortality and how you can control at your level and where you have to consult the experts for the management of the goat kit mortality. So the good there is a lot of uh, research in the, I would say the epidemiological studies being carried out by the various scientists at different universities. And they found out that it is really a problem. If you see the mortality in the different class of the animals, it is ranging from 15 to 30%. And there is a estimated total death is within, uh, would be around 10 to 12 million kids per year. And really it is causing a very economic losses, sometimes heavy economic losses to the farmers. You can understand from 15 to 32%, it means almost one fourth of the bond kid is, uh, is being affected and this come to the mortality. We also make the attempt that the mapping the epidemiology of the kid mortality in the different agroclimatic condition in the country through a national projects being funded by ICR we have been noticed that we have been noticed that the mortality is ranging from 15 to almost 30 percent in our survey. Also, the different agroclimatic climatic conditions, averaging about 21.8 percent. It is also a significant one. See, uh, you can see the all agroclimatic climatic conditions, although little varied with the percentage of the mortality but it is really a problem in the field condition. This data is collected from the fields uh, survey only. So now this slides is showing that the, the different management system and what is the incidence of the kid mortality. If you see the farmer's flock, you will find the mortality is about 21.8% in our survey. It may be higher depending upon the input is being provided to by the farmers. So uh, if you see the under organized or systematic farming, where the scientific technology is being used by the farmers, the kid mortality, mortality is declined to the almost 17%. In AICRB adopted farms means we are having the 21 centers in the 15 quote breeds in 16 states. So we have also surveyed the kid mortality where the technology is being provided to the farmers, the kid mortality is almost 17%, almost 11%. In CIRG goat units, we are, we are having major focus on the all associated regions and pro providing the all inputs in terms of better nutrition, better rearing system, and the better uh, preventive of the 
disease control. So the mortality is for almost 5%. So if you can see that the rearing system or the use of the scientific technology playing a very important role from a very high mortality to the lower mortality that is restricted to the 5%. We also calculated the economics of the kid mortality. It comes uh, around the 14,589 rupees per household. So it is really a cause of concerns. We also made a survey on the important diseases that is uh, being responsible for the kid mortality in the different states. We found that diarrhea is one of the most significant disease in young age group that is, uh, is affecting the neonates or the kids. Besides the diarrhea, the pneumonia is also in number two places responsible for the death in the young states. Otherwise, in somewhere when there is an outbreak of the diseases like goat pox, it is also impacting the neonatal life. But diarrhea is the most common and the, I'm to say the top listed disease responsible for the mortality in the young kids. So if you see the overview of the kid mortality, there are the three major basic factors, the mother factors, kid factors, and management factors. The mother factors means mother is not, mother is uh, factors means the low production syndrome because of the low inputs, no low nutrition, and there may be suffering from nematabolic diseases, underfed, pregnant goats. So because of these mother factors, there is pure nutrition to the kids, placental size is not optimum, and the fetal growth is also not optimum, and deposition of the fetal fat to the, the pregnant stage is also being declined, that is being utilized by the kids at the time birth or the after the birth. So the mother factor is also responsible. If you are providing the better rearing system in terms of the nutrition, especially your the kids will be healthy and the mortality will definitely it will be a decline. So the kid factors means when the kid rearing system, there is a number of the infectious diseases that is from zero day to the younger stage are responsible for the kid factors. Manageable factor is always important in all livestock diseases, especially in the in so these infectious diseases, sanitation and hygiene, rearing practices, shelter management, timely prophylactic measures, they are also important one for controlling the infectious diseases, especially when you are rearing the large number of the animals, it has become more crucial and more paramount of importance. If you see the kid mortality, we can divide the mortality in the two major heads, infectious causes and the non-infectious causes. In the infectious causes, the number one is the diet as we have seen in our epidemiology. There are a number of the infections responsible for the neonatal diarrhea. We will discuss in detail also. Besides this, FMD, respiratory diseases involving the bacteria and viruses, and contagious ectima in tetanus, and non-infectious causes, that is hypothermia, starvation, jointal, poor shelter management, poor standard of hygiene, deficiency diseases in the pregnant dam or in that being reflected in the younger kids. It also, uh, also act as a predisposing factor or the precipitating factors for the kid mortality. If you see the top listed neonatal diarrhea complex, there are the infectious diseases is the major one, where the Ischia coli is the dominant pathogen that is also being assisted by the Clostridium perfringens, rotavirus group A, Bovine coronavirus, Cryptosporidium, Salmonella, although it is not very common in the course, but E. coli is the major pathogen. All these Clostridium, Clostridium, Rotavirus, Bovine coronavirus, Cryptosporidium, they are also they are providing the platform for the E. coli in the intestine. Means they are decreasing the immunity of the intestine, and the E. coli then start playing its role, major role in the mortality. The non-infectious diseases, sometimes there is a dietary errors, overfeeding of the milk is also responsible for the diarrhea. Once you are checking these uh, factors and uh, the desirable changes being done, then the non-infectious diarrhea is being responded. The polybacillosis is a major issue. If you understand the polybacillosis, you are able to control the polybacillosis, it is the half of the work being done. It is oral infections because it is environmental pathogen easily available in the contaminated waters and infected the udder and there is a very easy entrance to the oral ways. 
different the different pathotypes that are responsible for the diseases and generally it occurs in the two form diary form and septicemic form in diary form animal is suffering from diarrhea it is it may be yellow color diarrhea white color diarrhea and because of the dehydration if we are not managing and the animal may die also but septicemic form sometimes there is no diarrhea only the uh, the the, car, the kid become the weak and not able to stand up not able to suckle the dam and there is a certain death also but the treatment is only depending upon the oral and systematic route of antibacterial therapy by using the zentamicin ciprofloxacin and endofloxacin although endofloxacin is not being recommended in the younger age because of their long standing use uh, having the problem in the development of the bones but when there is a sensitivity and you can use for a short term periods rehydration therapy you need it antibacterial therapy is a major problem after a period of time there is a drug resistance so we are also suffering from this and uh, we, we are also mapping the drug resistance against the e coli that is a very, very, very important issue the, although there is no vaccine at present but the killed bacteria if you are maintaining an organized farm and if you are able to understand the major zero type of the e coli you can use a, your farm specific vaccine uh, for using the most prevalent the pathotypes and then you prepare the killed vaccine although there is no vaccine specifically available in the country as well, otherwise in the international market there is a availability of such a vaccine if you see the intermicrobial drug resistance especially for e coli we have also made a survey of the field isolates and the farmers which means farmers isolates where you are having a large number of the animals and you are giving more antibiotics to control the e coli this the resistance level is very high to the all classes of the antibiotics some inoculocyte ciprofloxacin sulfonamide penicillin nitrofuran and the most important is carfen so uh, the, the this is a problem Uh, if we are using the uh, the antibiotics this uh, slide show the antibiotic resistance in ciga toxin e coli is considered as the most pathogenic it is also gaining the resistance we also surveyed the amr genes in the e coli uh, we find the the amr genes including the streptomycin gentamicin sulfonamides penicillin cytosporin clonopenicols they are also being present in the e coli when you are using the common antibiotics so the highest we have reported the resistance to tetracycline sulfonamide streptomycin and clonopenicols the second uh, i told you the infectious diseases e coli is the dominant organism but other organisms sometimes become very important for example cryptosporidia cryptosporidia in the younger age of life up to 3 days of age it become is sometimes very important it may cause explosive problem in the farms if there is a high uh, the load of the infections especially the high load of infection or poor sites as being uh, monitors thousand to a site per gram otherwise in the smaller number of your site is being discharged and it is being un, it is being passed off without knowing the except cause except the region of the clostridium parva but it become a very important so you need to have a monitoring over the fecal examination of the cryptosporidium it is a protozoan it can be identified by the fecal examination but if you want to go for a treatment it needs a specialized treatments the treatment the specialized drugs being used for this uh, cryptosporidium are nitazoxanides halepizinone and parvomycins they have proved successful in the natural diseases caused by this protozoa second important disease uh, that need a discussion is pneumonia pneumonia is a multiple etiology it is caused by the bacteria different kind of the bacteria and the starting from the e coli staphylococcus and the pustula menhemia and also playing the mycoplasma is also one of the, uh, the bacterial region but the environmental stress is very important for example weaning stress sometimes the summer stress is also become important so summer pneumonia is also being experienced in the younger age of the animal up to 3 month of age and you will find the number of the pneumonia cases so up to 3 month of age it become a very important especially when you are keeping the animal under the feed lot conditions the pneumonia can be identified very easily by the clinical examination <clears throat> by the high rise of temperature 
when it respond to the antibiotics respond to the antibiotics especially when there is a mycoplasma is also one of the regions so when you are selecting the antibiotics the mycoplasma especially is being responded to three antibiotics one is tetracycline triamcin and tetracycline so you should have it broad spectrum antibiotics approach for treating the pneumonia in the kid so whenever there is a spike of the temperature either to the higher side or lower side the incidence of the pneumonia is increased so it is a environmental stress related condition there are other uh, the source of infection there is a navel infection if there is a by chance otherwise in the normal cases the navel is being dried off and there is no need but in, when you are rearing the large numbers and there may be a problem of uh, the navel infection the navel is being detached because of some reason so that become a portal of entry of the infection and that is causing the navel ill and the infection may reach to the joints it is causing the joint ill and infection reach to the liver which is hepatitis similarly the pneumonia and sometimes there is septicemia it becomes a cause of the death also similarly the tetanus is also a problem in the goat states although a very common one uh, otherwise uh, the, the tetanus is also sometimes become a death of the younger kids the last 10 years uh, we are uh, not experienced much cases because the tetanus is related with the hygiene if you are uh, having a good hygiene the possibility of the tetanus infection is not very common otherwise once there is a tetanus and it is very difficult to treat in the younger stage so it all uh, we are uh, recommending the, the vaccination especially in the pregnant animals so we can achieve the high level of the antibody in the colostrum uh, so it can be controlled by the passive immunization the fmd although uh, the, the goat in the adult animal is not a very i'm um, to say the uh, important disease it is sometimes subclinical but this disease is also changing the face in the kid, uh, goat also and somewhere there are some places the fmd is also being experienced as a uh, acute and severe disease otherwise in younger animals especially in the all class of lactic species is a very threatening disease it affecting the myocardium and suddenly there is a mortality even without showing any clinical sign there is no diarrhea no pneumonia and uh, most of the animal is died so it is a very important to control to vaccinate the adult animal to save the life of the young animal especially because of the fmd and uh, this is a exotic disease caprine arthritis encephalitis and this is not a disease in our country but why i am describing here because this disease is under a high vigilance in different institution especially in icr we are collecting the samples from the different farms and try to find out what are the zero prevalence or zero positivity against this viral disease and this is a very dangerous disease this is a viral disease and the virus is being transmitted to the colostrum otherwise you can say the colostrum is considered as a boon to the young animals providing the protection to the animal but in some of the cases where the virus is coming through the colostrum and the colostrum become a problem to the in younger animal the cae is causing the encephalitis and adult animal it is causing the 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 other the durated mastitis or the the arthritis so there is no case but we are keeping the vigilance over that another uh, important uh, pressure diseases uh, which is uh, sometimes become a the cause of the mortality. that is a taper caused by the monish expensa in the vitellina especially in the younger age 2 to 3 month of time sometimes there is a very high load of the parasitic infection especially gravids that blocking the intestines and blocking of the intestine is associated with the malabsorption diarrhea and poor absorption of the nutrients the animal become weak if you see the at the 2 month of age animal is not gaining body weight it may be a problem so what we also research that uh, whenever there is a blockage of the intestine so between the blockage the area become anaerobic and this anaerobic area is very much vulnerable and suitable for the multiplication of the anaerobic pathogen especially the clostridium so the suddenly the animal may die with the clostridium infection also if it is being affected by the taper so you need a fecal examination of the uh, taper and if you find the positivity you can go for a treatment of this taper you need a specialized intermantic 
like niclosamide, prezequintel, fanbendazole, and you can give the right dose rate. And sometimes you need a repetitive because sometimes the load of the infection is very high. The one single dose is not, I would say, sufficient. So you can use a repetitive doses. If you're having very, uh, there can be problem in the organized farm. So it is better to treat the adult animals. So, so that the load of the infection result is in declines and the availability of the infection to the younger animals also become lesser. The contest is time now, although it's not a very major disease or a high economic disease, but once it is being neglected by the farmers, it has become the infected and the secondary complications of suppuration is also responsible uh, and there is sometimes there's a mortality. Otherwise, there is a pustular scabby lesions over the lips and that may extend to the buccal cavity and sometimes uh, they make up uh, not able to even suckle the dams and not able to take any other like the grasses or some tree leaves. So animal may die because of inanition. Although there is no vaccination available uh, in our country, but in the international market, the contrasic thyma is a important disease and there is a combined vaccine of uh, thyma, goat pox and sheep pox is available in the international markets. So you can manage conservatively by using the local antiseptics and there is other antiviral is also being used. But the, if you are timely managing, timely using the antiseptics and then it will become here easy to control. But major important things, uh, especially on the farmers, when you are uh, removing the scabs, the scab is full of the, uh, the viruses. If, if there is being dropped down on the, the, uh, say the surface, the disease becomes endemic. So whenever you are removing the scabs, scabs will be collected, either they should be buried or burnt for the elimination of the virus from the pasture. Uh, the goiter, goiter, uh, it's not a very common, like some places where there is a deficiency of the iodine, it is affecting the thyroid development, and it becomes a problem. Either the kids born are dead kids or stillbirths, uh, if they are survived and they are not having poor uh, growth, so if you can see the photographs of the young aborted uh, animals where there is an increased size of the thyroids. So if there is a problem of the thyroids or there is a goiter, you can have a management by using the iodized salts by mixing the 2% to the concentrates, or you can use the 2% potassium iodide. This is important. It is, I say, it is very easily carried out at the dose rate of 10 ml per 20 kg to the coat, or especially when it is pregnant. So that is it. You can have the positive effect over the born kids within the three cases of the coiters. Thyroxine has also been advocated when this animal is suffering in the younger stage. It can also be used. So uh, it is a it is iron deficiency. You have to improve the iodine either by the substitution or by the nutritional plan. The floppy kid syndrome. Floppy kid syndrome is a is a disease. Sometimes being most of time it is being neglected. In this case, the animal becomes suddenly flaccid. There is a paralysis, weakness. There's animal not able to stand up. We confused with these other diseases like the muscular dystrophy, like the sometimes septicemia, enterotoxemia. So uh, this is being neglected, but it is generally being encountered in the up to the three to ten days of age, and there is a there may be some diarrhea, respiratory disease in combination. Otherwise, the paralysis or weakness is a major issue. If you see the biochemical alterations, the metabolic acidosis is a, a major, uh, I am to say, the clinical pathology. If you are countering the metabolic acidosis immediately, it responds magically. So you can use the uh, one tablespoon of baking soda and one quarter teaspoon of salt and two cup of water. You can use the orally to the kids. Commerce electrolytes you can use and the sodium bicarbonate intravenous you may also use to counter the metabolic acidosis. It, it really uh, work as a magic to control the floppy kid syndrome, but need a differentiation of the important diseases. The white muscle disease is a vitamin E or vitamin, uh, what you say, the selenium deficiency that affecting the muscle of the different organs, especially the heart and the respiratory. So there is a respiratory distress, stiffening of the hind limbs, arse back, paralysis, animal is not able to, I would say the 
not able to stand up and settle. So there is a uh, there is a uh, young uh, young one is suffering, and you can identify. So the vitamin E is the major issue. So you can use the treatment by using the vitamin E in the pregnant dam also in the younger kid also by using the different preparations available in the markets. If you go for a prevention, the 25 to 50 mg of the vitamin E per kg of concentrate for adults and 50 to 100 mg per kg of concentrate for kids, it's sufficient to replenish or to supplement the deficiency of the vitamin E. Hypothermia and hypoglycemia sometimes is being observed when the animal is being exhausted, the body reserves, animal it become cold, so fetal reserve because of the poor fetal reserves. So the low temperature, animal is very cold to touch, so it is immediately you go for the management improvements, especially you try to manage the environment, be comfortable uh, to the younger kids and you can go for the warm dextrose 20% and ensure the colostrum will feeding and other like the timely suckling, proper amount of the sucklings. And if you need an extra amount of the milk, you can other source of the milk you can provide to the animals and you can prevent this hypothermia and hypoglycemia. Urolithiasis, sometimes uh, if you see when you are organizing the systematic uh, farmings and you are putting the younger animal on the excessive feeding of the grains, um, especially for the uh, some high body weight gain. And this uh, is uh, animal suffer from urolithiasis and there is incontinence or there is a blockage of the, the, at, at the different stage of the urinary tracts. It's more severe in the early castrated of the male ruminants. And the, 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 the disturbing the calcium phosphorus ratio, it, it has become precipitating the addition of the, uh, you know, the formation of the calculi in the different uh, the, uh, the ureter or the kidney also. So it is uh, being reared in the high concentrate diets is being experienced by the, when the animal is being reared for the heat purpose of the sailing of the high body weights, it is being observed. So the um, heavy grain feeding should be avoided. And uh, if there is a very pain, you can use the spasmodic drugs and the administration of the ammonium chlorides to change the pH of the urine at the dose rate of 10 grams per head per day or you can mix at the level of 2% in the concentrated ras into the growing kids. It can be prevented, that can, um, can prevent to a certain extent. If it is a very acute condition, you have to consult to the veterinarian for a treatment or for a surgical intervention. A coccidia is always a menace in the younger kids, especially after the three months of age. Otherwise, the coccidia sometimes in the before the three months of time is also become a problem. Because the animal is gaining the infection at the one and a half month of age and this getting the initial infection. And the infection it is compiled at the age of two and a half month to three months of age, and the animal may suffer from the coccidia. The severity of the disease depending upon the load of the coccidia. So if there is a abundant cox oocyst in the environment, there is insanitation, and then there may be a lot of problems. So it is either being exhibited by the acute diarrhea. And the, the symptom is also dependent upon the load of the infection. If it is a lower or a longer duration, and you know the, the coccidia is causing the uh, affecting the intestine and different life cycle. And the life cycle is invading the epithelium to a larger extent. It covers the major, major portion of the intestines that become the non-absorptive. So the water of the animals being consuming the nutrition it is uh, not being absorbed, so animal becomes stunted growth. Whenever there's a younger kids suffering with the stunt growth, the coccidia is one of them. But weaning stress, overcrowding are always a predisposing factors. It is also showing the life cycle where the different stages of the cygogony or sporogony infecting the epithelium of the intestine. But you know the overcrowding is a major issue. If you are providing proper space to the animals, it is being controlled. Younger animals should be kept separate from the adult animal because adult animal is so is a source of infection. So the adult animal should be keep from the younger animal. Alone. Ensuring the and your shed should be cleaned. And if you are using the kacha floor, it should be a regular replacement of the soil because upper layer, almost six inch top soil, is it is infected soil. So you can remove at the interval of time, maybe three months or six months of annually. So you can remove the top infection. Sprinkling of the limes is also 
important. But the treatment, sulfur diamidine, emporium, nitroprazon, toltrazol, they are all the good medicine to control. But the prevention is always better. At the age of the two and a half month, you can use any coxidistate, lower doses for a longer period of time. It is, it is very workable. But early dose should you avoid. If you are giving the dose at the one and a half month of age where the animal is getting the infection, if the early infection is providing the immunity to the animal, it's a pre immunity. So early uh, dosing of the costate should be avoided. So we are recommending that two and a half months in, uh, is very ideal uh, for if there is a, uh, you are experiencing coxidia in the organized system. So two and a half months, you can give a single dose of the costate. It may be sulfur diamidine and petroleum. It depend upon your availability. So the long-term treatment monocin is also very effective, but monocin is an anaphoric antibiotics and all the, uh, this kind of the, uh, I would say the supplementation is uh, also now being banned by the government of India. So we should be avoided. And uh, we have a major focus on the sanitation hygiene or prevention from the infection from adult to younger animals. And then there are a lot of effort being done by changing the different rearing systems. We are using the raised plate form to these animals, uh, they, they can see difficult pallets being dropped down. So there is a possibility, even decreasing the possibility of the infection from adult animal to the younger animals. The enterotoxemia, although it is a very important disease in the growing animals or the adult animals, but in younger age of life, up to one month and two months, the clostridium is also playing very important role. In our survey, we find that sometimes the clostridium is a becoming major issue. So the clostridium is also being considered as a associated organism in the young mortality. There's a lot of uh, uh, the different uh, lethal uh, exotoxins, and there is a change of feed. It become uh, a change of feed, especially towards the more carbohydrate-rich diets, and that change the pH of the intestine. Then the clostridium is playing an important role. The sign is almost in the most of the cases acute in paracutes, and there is a there is a there is a pain and struggling, and there may be diarrhea and there is acute mortality, but chronic form is very important. Chronic form means there is a progressive weight loss and the animal become weak. So this, uh, this uh, the chronic form is also need to be a special attention with the veterinarian in the case of the clostridium parfinchins. You can identify the disease, but you know for the, and the more uh, advanced, you can go for a multiplex PCR for PCR diagnosis, but the management Mostly the acute conditions, very grave conditions. You go for the antibiotics, electrolyte, bicarbonates, and the steroids. It is definitely useful to combat the shock and the non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs like clunexin is also important. And parietal antibiotics, oral antibiotics. Suppose there is an outbreak of the uh, this clostridium. So you can use the parental antibiotics in the affected animals. Those are not affected. The oral antibiotics, such as the tetracycline bolus, it reduces the risk to convert into a clinical case. So the AT vaccine uh, is not very much uh, immunogenic in the goat if you compare with the sheep. So we are working on the new uh, ET vaccine in our institutions. We are identifying the more specific, uh, the, the clostridium parfinges that causing the problem to the goats. Uh, we are in progress uh, and we have identified the prototypes. PPR is the most uh, I would say the important disease for the farmers, which can easily identify it. And if the, uh, the animal is not protected, then the younger kids suffer very severely. One month, two months of visa is there is a lot of outbreaks and uh, the diarrhea, pneumonia and buccal lesions are the more main clinical pointers. So vaccination is a very important to the animal at the right age of The goat pox is also a problem. It's a viral disease causing the specific uh, the lesions over the surface or the all part of the body. And they are very common in the perennial region. And sometimes the disease is more systemic in nature. So the mortality is very high, reaching to the 60 to 70%. But some of the cases where there's only a, only the stone like uh, the, the pox lesions is being over the skin, this known as stone pox, the low systemic sign. Uh, they can be responded to the antibiotics the pneumonia is the major problem at this stage. So uh, you can prevent by using the right vaccine at the right time. We will discuss the vaccine. So the basic uh, management tips. Uh, 
the trading should be a well anticipated events not an unexpected surprise means if you have a planning in the rearing system you are breeding the animal at a particular times means the breeding at one point of time you are expecting the kidding at one point of time so you have better management if it is just like a if you are uh, there, there is a breeding is going on for a very longer times so there is infection is being built up in the farm and the, the problem is not being controlled so we should have a, a controlled breeding plan in our farm if we are organized sector so you have a well clean well lit well wetted ventilated fans naval management is really important because naval is sometimes become a portal of infection of the different type of the organism so the naval amendment by using the tincture id till it become till it is being shed out clean water is an important because clean water the major oral infection major uh, root is oral infection so we are providing the clean water clean milk you are solving the problem of the diarrhea or solving the problem of the kidney mortality so you can use the kmn4 you can use the calcium hypochlorites uh, there are the other chlorine tablets so at the, the right concentrations if you are providing the clean water it is an important so clean milk always use the suckling to the animal after the cleaning and when you are uh, going for a milking and that with also having clean environment and then you have a clean suckling to the now we come to the the control of this kid uh, mortality the pregnancy management is very important one because in the younger age the most associated organisms are like e coli salmonella clostridium cryptosporidium rotavirus coronavirus we are do not have a vaccine although in international markets there is a vaccine it is available and that is having the all important pathogens we use in the as a dam dam vaccination we are also uh, uh, focusing on this multi antigen vaccine for the vaccination in dam so we can have a high colostrum value we have a all antibody in the colostrum so we can prevent as a larger extent even though so the uh, the smart management colostrum timely sanitation improving passive immunity by using the specific vaccines or by using the different other ways for example if you are supplementing the proper nutritions you are giving the supplementation of the important the minerals like copper and zinc it is also having a immune modulation on the pregnancy and you have a better colostrum and you have a prebiotics and both both prebiotics both are being used in the pregnant dams especially prebiotics and uh, for example the prebiotics like uh, this uh, marine oligosaccharides it is also working in the dam and it is also being utilized in younger kids both prebiotics and prebiotics so it improve the innate immunity so this way and there are certain certain products of the herbal that having a uh, responsible for uh, increasing the immunity of the pregnant dams we improve in the colostrum value so that's why the pregnancy management means you have a better nutrition properly vaccination and uh, vaccination especially they are very useful in the pregnant time for example the et vaccine and the tetanus vaccine they are very useful in the pregnant stage they are expecting the high antibody titer in the colostrum in the successive milk feed so uh, the the basic tips are the you can avoid you should avoid the overcrowding that minimize the infection and the keeping kid away from the adult animal is a basic thing so you are rearing the younger animals you know, 0 to 3 month of age 3 to 6 month of age 6 to 9 month of age adult animal the, uh, the pregnant animals the adult male animals regular cleaning of the premises sprinkling of the lime weekly fortnightly removal of the infected top soil timely vaccination they are the important tips now we come to the vaccination plan so vaccination is a very Have a always a key role in the control of the infection in the MS stage. PPR at three months of age, and if you are going for a vaccination, it provides immunity for three years. ET vaccine three to four months of age, and you have a booster thereafter for three to four months uh, for a week later of the first injection, and six months in between. If you having high incidence of the ET in your farm, you can decrease the interval. You can go for the three to four month interval. You can opt. Foot and mouth disease three to Four month of age again three to four week later of first injection then every six month goat pox vaccine three to four months again you need a booster then annual vaccination HS means when there is a 
uh, more number of the pneumonia cases in the farms, you can uh, use the same HS vaccine uh, and the new uh, animals in the goat also. They have the similar pattern almost with the goat box annual vaccination or whatever the recommendations is given by the, I would say the manufacturer, they should be followed. So CIRG also developed the different mobile apps, uh, Bakri Metra, Bakri Palan, goat products, uh, the basic information to the farmers. Uh, the different uh, the stages and different uh, the kind of the practices, for example, nutrition, breeding management, AI, you can have it. It's so over that. So this is uh, from my sides. Uh, but the important thing is the right time vaccination and the right time and the management, cleanly hygiene are important one for the infection to control the infection. Uh, thank you, sir, for such a marathon lecture. It has really provided insights into the reasons of kid mortality and its control at uh, farm level, particularly. And here are some questions, sir. Uh, right, right. We would like to have answers from you. Right, uh, right. Dr. Padri Narayan Chan would like to ask you that uh, drug of choice for E. coli infection kits nowadays with respect to antibacterial resistance. E. coli is a gram negative organism. Mostly the aminoglycosides, especially gentamicin, kenamycin, tavaromycin, they are the important drugs uh, being tested. And the cyclosporin is also like the cipatroxyl and cephalexin is also uh, susceptible antibiotics. And quinolones, like endofloxacin, it is a very sensitive one. Uh, but the long-term use of endofloxacin it is uh, also important, also, also causing the arresting the development of the bone. So the gentamicin is still is a very important disease, and in our experience, we are monitoring the drug resistance against the coli. We found that gentamicin is still a very effective medicine in control of the E. coli infection. Uh, sir, also uh, he has asked about the uh, drug of choice for joint ill. Joint ill uh, uh, is also caused by the some Mr. Phylococcus infection, Mr. Focus infection. So the, it is a gram positive organism. You can use the penicillin or the synthetic penicillin, ampicillin, moxicillin. It is good. But sometimes the mycoplasma is also causing the mycoplasmal arthritis. They do need a specialized treatment. The mycoplasma arthritis is being responded to the tetracyclines and the floxacin. Uh, it is in, uh, so you can um, have a, a different choice, but you have to need a diagnosis uh, for the mycoplasmal infection. Sir, Dr. Mohammad Azarima Ahmed from Akola, uh, he wants to know that uh, uh, what kind of preventive care of kids should be taken or focus from day one to day three. What do you suggest? Oh, actually from day one, mm -hmm. Because in the day one, we are providing the colostrum. If you are providing the colostrum timely in sufficient quantity, it you have win the race. Thereafter, up to the one month of age, there is a lot of chances of the infection by the environmental pathogen. For example, E. coli. So you have to avoid the E. coli in the younger stage of life. It is can be prevented by providing the clean milk or the clean water. So you can prevent the infection. Or the second portal of the infection is the damaged neighbor. You are applying the tincture iodine till it is being shed. You are preventing the infection. So up to one to three month, uh, up to one month of age, this uh, uh, the this two important tips were important. After the one month of age, when the animal is gaining the other infections like the tapeworm, coccidia, so you have to monitoring the fecal examination. If there is a load of the a worm is increasing, you can use a specialized medicine and up to the two and a half month of age, and then you can use a coxid state to control the coxid. Uh, sir, Ashwini, uh, Dr. Ashwini Gaikwad wanted to ask you that uh, what can be the possible morbidity and mortality rate uh, in case of CAE? CAE is an exotic disease and a very dangerous disease, I tell you. And we are very I'm to say the happy that the disease is not knocking the door of your country. Otherwise, the mortality in younger age, encephalitis is very high. So sometimes reaching to the 60 to 70%. But in the adult animal, the CAE is, is a chronic disease. 
is causing the mastitis, is causing the encephalitis, I would say the arthritis, the animal is not able to stand up. So really, um, we are monitoring the disease and uh, we are, do not have any clinical case in our country yet. Uh, sir, Rajan Babu would like to know that uh, what is your uh, opinion about oral antibiotics in case of wounds? Oral antibiotics in younger kids. Yes, oh, oral antibiotics in younger kids always avoid it because it is the immune system is also weak. Animal is not pro properly having the microflora group. <coughs> so you should avoid the oral antibiotics. Oh, yeah. It's better to use the rearing system improvements, better hygiene, better sanitation, and you have to major focus on the improved passive immunization and improve the innate immunity by utilizing the prebiotics and postbiotics. Oh, Otherwise, the the antibiotics are always very dangerous uh, for the younger kids, so affecting the health of the animal and the future of the growth of the animal. Sir, due to time constraint, we will take only one question. And uh, Dr. Avinash Chawan would like to know from you that uh, what should be the what should be the deworming schedule of kids? What should be the deworming schedule for deworming kids? Schedule. Actually, the deworming, uh, only the younger age of life, up to half month, hour and half month and two months, there is a possibility of the taper. If you are monitoring, if you are getting the infection, you can use the specific medicine like nucleosomide and praziquantel. Hemonchus infection is start gaining in trends to the kids at the age of three months of time. So we are not recommending the enthalmentic before three months of time. It should be a three month or four month of time you can advocate the enthalmatic. Generally, farmers are giving the enthalmatic at a very early stage of time, but it is a very uh, good practice and is recommending that you are using the enthalmatic three months or four months of age of the younger uh, Before we close uh, today's session, so Dr. Badrin Narayan Chan again wants to know from you that which are the examples of uh, herbal immunomodulators? Actually, herbal immune monitors are uh, well established. We have also researched on that. And we develop a herbal immune modulator, this IME4 photograph you have been seen in my presentation. It is a commercial product. And especially it has been uh, recommended for the pregnant animals. And the most important uh, are the uh, Vidhania, very important. And uh, besides this, this is Stenospora. They are very commonly used two plants. And we've also used these two plants in the development of it. If you are using crude powder uh, to the pregnant animal, it will really improve the immunity and it having a very positive effect over the born kids and their future life. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for uh, such a nice lecture. I love that you won and uh, uh, really has provided insights into the reasons of kid moderating, kid moderating and their control. And uh, definitely it would uh, benefit all of our participants and thereby all the entrepreneurs and farmers of the country. Because uh, our participants, they are from all our corners of the country. And uh, definitely uh, your insights and your suggestions uh, would uh, go to the uh, every corner of the nation and uh, will definitely uh, serve to the farmers. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for your uh, valuable time and uh, your suggestions, guidance uh, regarding the uh, health aspects of the kit, particularly uh, around which the economics of this business is revolving. Thank you, sir. Thank you from the organizer side, uh, from the uh, participant sides and from Australian Dean of PJIBS, Dr. Bikan. Thank, Thank you, you sir. very much. So this is my privilege and my happiness always to join uh, such a seminar interacting with the Thanks. Even though you are busy scheduled, uh, you have given us time and uh, uh, really uh, it, it, it is a uh, proud privilege to us to have a, a guest speaker like you, sir. Thank you, sir.